recently accepted a software engineering position at Amazon. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about a system design question and how I approached a system design on my interview and how you can in the future. So I'm going to switch over to my iPad and show you how it's done on a, a whiteboard. So in this video, we're going to be designing a file store similar to Dropbox. Um, and if you're not familiar with this kind of service, Dropbox is a file storing service that lives on your computer. You can drop files into the Dropbox and it will sync with the remote server that and you can access your files anywhere that you have the Dropbox app or service installed, even on the website. So we're going to be talking about a couple of the requirements. It uploads files, it downloads files, and you can share files. If you don't know, this is what the Dropbox icon kind of looks like. I'm sure you've seen it on your computer or somebody else's computer. The Dropbox folders have that little icon to let you know that it's connected to the Dropbox. So the first, we need to talk about the requirements of this kind of service. The requirements is going to be very large. We already know that this is a distributed system. Let's say that the files can be 16 gigabytes maximum. The files can also be shared with a link. A person will get the link and then they can go directly to the Dropbox to view it, their website, and also download it. Let's say that an average user has 2,000 files and 200 megabytes is the average file size. So we already know that this is a very large scale system. And on average, a user will be uploading, there will be 100 million daily active users and a user will be uploading 10 to 20, 10 to 20 files a day. So the first step is to calculate the ingress and the throughput. The ingress and the throughput are just fancy ways of saying the data in versus the data out. Ingress is incoming data, throughput is exporting data. So to do this, we're going to have to do some map, napkin math and we're going to be taking the number of files multiplied by the number of megabytes by the daily active users and get, that can calculate our average ingress per day. So pull out my handy dandy calculator. Um, we can calculate this as 400,000 million megabytes. And when we break that out, that's going to be 400 billion megabytes. And we know that this is going to need to be accessed using a lot of different servers. Um, we won't be able to upload all of this at the same time. That would be almost impossible um, unless you have a very powerful computer. So pulling out my calculator, calculate how many megabytes, um, how many uh, actual bytes this is going to be. It's going to be 4.19 times 10 to the 17 bytes per day. Um, and writing that down we can calculate how many um, what that is in a bigger unit um, so bytes kilobytes megabytes gigabytes terabytes um, and then I think we're missing a couple zeros yeah there we go um, kilobytes megabytes gigabytes terabytes petabytes and actually um, just messed up is actually going to be terabytes not petabytes um, because uh, the first three will put into the kilobyte range. So um, it will be actually be 4.419 terabytes per day, not petabytes. Um, so uh, if we divide that by 60 and divide that by 24 and um, second 60, then that's going to be around 290 gigabytes per second. Um, so this is going to be a very, very, very large-scale system that can handle a very large ingress uh, and now we need to calculate the throughput so 
uh, an interesting aspect of this is that we're going to take some file system fundamentals uh, and model our file based on the Linux, the Linux file system. We can break up a large file into smaller chunks and the average chunk size can be around two megabytes. This is to make uploading easier and also help distribute the load. If we just have one server uploading the entire file, then it would be really hard because we would run into a lot of memory issues, especially with larger, larger files. There's no way we would have around 16 gigabytes of RAM on. We, we could, but it would be very expensive to do that. So instead we can upload megabyte chunks, two megabytes, and then um, let's say the average chunk size is two megabytes and we multiply that by the number of files and the number of users per day. So it's 4,000 million megabytes, which comes out to 4 million gigabytes, which isn't actually true because it's 1024 instead of four um, instead of 1000 um, so break it down into uh, the math um, that's uh, 400 million um, 4,000 um, megabytes 4,000 million megabytes um, which comes out to 4.19 times 10 to the 15 bytes And when we uh, calculate the actual value in the larger terms, we can find that this is actually going to be bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. It's going to be 4.19 uh, terabytes per day. So now that we have the um, the amount, um, we can actually uh, four point one nine terabytes per day, not per second. We can actually divide that by sixty, divide that by twenty four, and divide that again by sixty to find the throughput per second. So pull out my handy dandy calculator. I'm going to be calculating this right now, um, and the final value is going to be. around 48.4 um, 48.4 gigabytes per second so very comparable to the 290 gigabytes per second not 290 terabytes I know I made a mistake there um, but you can see that this is a very large-scale system there's very it's gonna be very tough to do this on one computer so we already know we're gonna need to use some distributed system fundamentals so how are we going to handle this? Um, we're going to have a client. So the client is going to be holding the, the file that we want to upload. And we need to start understanding how we're going to chunk this thing. So let's look at, at a 200 megabyte file. In the Linux operating system, we're going to be borrowing a concept uh, of inodes. And the basic concept is that you can chunk a large file into smaller parts. You can do this by taking a predefined chunk size, which on the Linux operating system is around two kilobytes. So let's draw this out. A large scale file can be broken up into much smaller chunks. The inodes are block size, are a specified block size um, on the Linux operating system they're four kilobytes but this would take forever and probably crash our servers because there's handling too many too many files so we're gonna make this around four megabytes um, but in our use case we're gonna make it two megabytes um, to make the math a little bit easier so 200 two megabyte 200 megabyte file can be turned into it should, it's actually 10 chunks. I was dividing by four, or it should be 100 chunks. I was dividing by four, but in this case, it's gonna be 50 chunks for if we're using four megabyte chunks. So then the client would send a chunk to individual web servers. The individual web servers will handle the processing and then we'll, we'll associate a chunk ID with a file ID with it. So each server will receive a part of a chunk 
they'll gather it together and then signal to a secondary worker, which will stitch it together to recreate the file. Um, the stitch worker will then pass it on to a storage worker. Um, and at this stage, we're gonna need to uh, associate the file to a database row. Um, this is when the file actually becomes part of our service and is no longer just a free flowing file. We're going to need the URL, which is H the HDFS or the S3 or um, whatever data storage solution you're going to be using for this. Um, it, the URL, the name, and the metadata, which is going to be a dictionary. So we're going to we can use this with SQL. Um, this way, it would make it easier to associate metadata if we want to create a hierarchy of da a data hierarchy. And also, uh, it will generally be faster uh, to query. We won't be doing MapReduce operations, so there's no reason to use a NoSQL database. Uh, so now we have the cold storage solution, which is HGFS or S3. Or you can just use a hard drive if you wanted to um, set up your own data center. S and this is going to be where we're storing all our files. Afterwards, we are going to be pulling out a, a Postgres or a SQL instance. This will hold our, uh, our database rows to be, um, to be pulled whenever we need to access a file. And then lastly, we can actually add a cache into the system. The point of the cache is actually following the 80-20 principle. It will let you access, re access recent files. And the concept is that most of the files aren't going to be used all the time. So when a file is accessed, there's an increased likelihood that it's going to be accessed again very close to when it was accessed because when files are hot, then they'll remain hot for a short period of time. So we can actually, when we get chunks, we can store it into the cache and then shorten the time to access by directly s hooking up the server to the cache and then sending the file to the client instead of accessing cold storage. We can use an LRU eviction scheme to do this. So now that we uh, now that we have this basic system we already know that there's going to be some issues here um, because the cold storage and the web servers are going to be the points of high usage so we're going to need a couple load balancers so we we would have to add a load balancer to let the client attach to the load balancer, the client would attach to the load balancer and the load balancer would connect to the web servers. This will allow us to also spin up more web servers if we need to. Um, we would also need a load balancer for the cold storage solution and that way uh, we can distribute the load to access and write to the cold storage. But overall, this entire system is essentially how you would approach designing a Dropbox like system and how you should and um, could approach it on your tech interviews. So that covers that. Thank you again for watching and, and like and subscribe for more.